Welcome to Warrior DNA, everyone. Stacey Wallace here, and we've got a pretty cool topic today that is going to speak straight into your business, straight into your life. You might have looked at the topic and thought, what do I fluffy feely, I hope you dance, vultures, hummingbirds. Well, this is gonna be a great correlation, not only to where you're at, but to where your business is headed. An important, I think a key dynamic to keeping your business on track with the right people at the right time in the right place so the right things can happen. That's Keith Kraft that always says that in his church services of our church, Elevate Life Church. Well, I wanna welcome you today to Warrior DNA and uh, we're gonna pull our winner for today. Every week when you share and you like the post, of course, we go through and we see all your hearts and your likes and all of that. But more importantly, we go in and we look who has shared this, who's liked it, who's helping us spread good news to people throughout the business and marketplace. And we pick a winner every single week and uh, give you a free product, free training, uh, free CD. Uh, this week, we're actually going to be giving a packet of trainings and we're going to send it out to a winner that we're going to draw here in just a minute. But today I'm real excited. Warrior DNA basically stands for the distinctive qualities and characteristics of men and women who possess ridiculous faith and fearless courage even in the midst of adversity. So I love that you're tapping in with us every week. Warrior DNA happens at 5 p.m. We are so grateful that you take this little 15, 20 minutes with us every week and we're pouring in concepts and ideas that you can apply to your business and life so that you can thrive in the midst of adversity. Now, I wanna just open up today by saying happy Father's Day for those of you who are natural fathers, meaning that you've given birth or your wives have given, you've planted seed to give birth. Uh, happy Father's Day to you. We honor you, we celebrate you. Without you, we all wouldn't be here. Uh, we want to celebrate fathers in the faith, maybe people who have been mentors to help you be who you were created to be. We celebrate you. Happy Father's Day. Fathers who have taken the role in business and in corporate America to not only be great bosses or uplines or leaders, but you've taken the time to actually wrap your arms and your heart around the people that are around you and take on a fathering spirit. We really are a fatherless generation where people are trying to figure out they don't follow businesses anymore. They don't follow brands they follow leadership and so thank you for those fathers who've taken on that fathering spirit of your teams and your businesses in the marketplace to care about people more than you care about profits profits happen when you care about people so we really celebrate those of you who've stepped up in your integrity you know success can keep get you to the top or talent can get you to the top but character and those fatherly qualities are going to keep you at the top in your business and in your career so happy father's day to everybody happy father's day to my husband today when i was posting happy father's day to my husband obviously i couldn't stop uh, thinking about my dad on Father's Day and some of the innate qualities that he poured into me. He passed away about seven years ago, but before he passed away, there were some very special things that he and I did together. Now, my father had renal cell carcinoma cancer, and uh, just six months, he was diagnosed at stage four, had some back pains, and went in for an MRI. It was stage four cancer, had already eaten a couple of his uh, vertebrae, and uh, was wrapped throughout his spinal cord. It was crazy, crazy cancer. But in that six months and in, in his life, you know, we didn't mourn his death. We missed him, but we celebrated his life because he gave us more in 63 years than most fathers will implant in five lifetimes. He spent his life leaving everything on the court, leaving everything on the table. We didn't live with regret, wishing we would have said, I love you. We said, I love you every day. He was very romantic, very passionate. And one of the things I remember, I, you can see in my Facebook post there, or even on Instagram, uh, if, you, if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. But you'll see in the post there, I was talking about some of the things I remember about my dad. And one of the things when we talk about the difference between vultures in your business and hummingbirds, um, one of the things we're going to talk about is the dance. Now, my father, I'll never forget, I was senior vice president of a corporation, and it was a rough, rough season. I, I actually worked in Texas, lived in Oklahoma, so I would drive three and a half, four hours to get to my office. And uh, I, would, I was driving back when I was crying to my dad, and I was just having a really, really rough season leading that company 
And I remember getting back and, and he was, you know, comforting me. He says, you know, when you get back, let's take some time, honey. So I got back. I drove back to his house and my mom's house. And when I walked in the living room, he was, I mean, in the front door, he was standing in the living room, arms stretched wide open. I was crying. I remember it was just a really, really rough day. And I walked over to him and he just stretched out his hands. No music was playing in the natural, but we began to dance. And as we danced, he would whisper in my ear saying, it's going to be okay. God's created you for such a time as this. You can do this. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And he whispered in my ear words of life. And we danced. I danced to the music of a father who was speaking into another generation saying, don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit on me. And he was speaking life and energy. And you know, there's a song that, that reminds me of this. And I've had it in my spirit all day when I started thinking about my daddy dancing with me. And it's a song that right now, no matter what you're going through in your business, no matter what you've got to face this week, maybe you're going into court this week. Maybe you've got some challenges you know you've got to face this week. Maybe your numbers have been down in your business. Here's what I want to say to you. Maybe you're looking at transition and you're trying to figure out what to do. And I had somebody come up to me today and they said, um, you know, I don't get involved in, in, in multi-level marketing businesses. I don't get involved in direct sales businesses. I've been a part of one of those before and I got burned. And here's what I want to say to you, because you guys know I am such a proponent of diversified income, multiple streams of income, and being focused where you're at, like a laser focus, but making sure that what you're doing, that you've got multiple touch points. I, I thought of this song all day long when I thought of my daddy on Father's Day. It's a song that I think it was Leanne Womack that originally sang, and it goes like, I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. Get your field to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. And you know, no matter what you're going through right now, today's message is about the dance. No matter what you face, no matter what you've been through, no matter who comes around you, what voices come around you, I hope you dance. This week, I was uh, walking with my husband. We Every morning, we go for a walk. We pray over our business, pray over our team, pray over our employees, pray over our staff, pray over our, our children, pray over our relatives, pray over our church, pray over our pastors, pray over our government. And as we're praying, it's interesting, little buddy, he's about a 75-pound Australian shepherd, he just keeps walking, right? And he's always in the front just a-walking. Well, we're walking down this path, and we were walking in between where there's houses on each side, and, you know, it's the back of the houses, so it's their backyards. And all of them have their fences and their dogs. And it's interesting, we're walking down, and these dogs, I'll probably post a video of this because I did catch it on video. These dogs are yelling at him. <laughs> And there's these little chihuahua dogs. And then there's this big German shepherd. And Buddy just keeps walking. Regal is all get out. He just keeps walking straight forward. And there was this group. I mean, it was like six different yards of dogs that were going nuts. The noise was crazy. But Buddy just kept walking. And here's what I want to say to you when we talk about vultures and hummingbirds. You're going to hear a lot of opposition in your lifetime. No matter what you do, even if it's your relationships or who you choose to marry or what you decide to do with your career, people are going to come against you. And there will be some who will be like little chihuahuas that are going to chirp in your ear. They're impotent. They're small voices, but they're loud, right? Then you're going to have German shepherds that are going to be like, ooh, I'm big, I'm mighty, I'm, more, I'm wealthier than you, I'm stronger than you. But here's the deal. Don't let their imprisoned lives keep you off track from your freedom. 
Their buddy walked in freedom, just walked forward on that path. He wasn't imprisoned by chain link fences or by picket fences. He just got to walk in freedom. There are going to be people that are going to try to get you distracted from your path because they don't know no better. They don't have any better lifestyle, so all they can do is chirp. Don't let someone else's fail you, failure in business or in life or in marriage get you off track from your greatest days and your finest hours. When I look at vultures, now this is interesting because when I was thinking about I hope you dance, I started thinking about the dance of a hummingbird. I started thinking about how beautiful they are. You know, my dad, one of the things before he passed away, he, he built this beautiful garden in the back for my mom, flower garden, and he had statues and a statue of Jesus and, and all these little hummingbirds would come and they would float in the back there. And it's amazing when you watch a hummingbird, what they do and how they operate and just the dynamics behind how they keep themselves elevated with such massive momentum. And so I started thinking about that. So today I started doing a research on hummingbirds and, and then honestly hummingbirds and then vultures. And here's what I want to say to you when it comes to dancing. When I think of birds that dance, I think of hummingbirds because they stand there elevated. And if you watch them, they just, they flutter ever so quickly, but they're dancing for you. And I want you to think about this. How many people in your life are vultures? Here's what a vulture is. Now a vulture plays an important role because a vulture actually preys on the dead. They take away the dead carcasses. So they actually keep us from disease. Believe it or not, there's good in evil. There's good in bad. If it wasn't for rain, we wouldn't appreciate sunshine. If it wasn't for cold, we wouldn't appreciate the warmth, right? If it wasn't for darkness, we wouldn't appreciate light. So we find value in that, but you don't want to hang out with vultures. You want to live your life with hummingbirds. Why? Because vultures prey on the wounded or the dead. There's going to be voices out there in your life that they can tell when you're weak and they're going to try to pick you off. They're going to try to get you distracted. They're going to try to yell in your ear, try, hey, there's a better way. The grass is greener on the other side. And I want to challenge you this. Do not let the vultures or the caged dogs get you off track just because they sense blood. You might be wounded. You might be hurt. You might be in a place where you're, you're feeling like maybe it's not all that it should be. Don't let vultures steal you from what it is you're called to do. Now, here's what's interesting. While vultures prey on dead carcasses, hummingbirds, this is what I love, they look for life. They're life seekers. They look for life abundantly. They look for colorful flowers. They're all about what's living. They're about future. They're about what's in the now, what's been rising up to create color. And here's what's another amazing thing. While vultures are all about the dead, hummingbirds are all about pollinating new life. They're about duplication. They're about taking something small and making it something bigger. You want to have hummingbird people in your life. Remember, alignment precedes assignment. Who you align yourself with will determine whether you're building death or you're building life. And when you seek to build life, here's what you can assure yourself of. The more you fill your funnel, let's say in a sales funnel, with life producing leaders. Don't go seeking the people who don't have jobs and they're down on their luck and they're complaining and you're thinking, wow, Billy Bob needs an opportunity. Cause you know what? You're gonna be surrounded by a bunch of vultures. You're gonna be surrounded by a bunch of negative people. I challenge you today, make a list of 10 to 20 new people that represent the most positive, life building, the most successful people who radiate wealth, people who radiate positivity. Make a list of those people and begin to go after them because here's what they do. They bring light into a room. They bring life into a room. Here's an interesting uh, little bit of information about hummingbirds. Hummingbirds have a higher perception of vision than most any other animal. You know why? Because they're moving at such rapid speed that they have to process stimuli more than any other bird. Isn't that cool? So think about it. You, you don't think about it, how fast this bird's moving and it's all over the place, but they have to be able to have locked in perception, just like little buddy that day. Everything's going on around me, but I'm going to stay locked in. I'm going to stay on my path. Run your race. 
Dance your dance. Stay on your course. Hummingbirds also have increased metabolism. In fact, they have higher metabolism than any other animal. Why is that? Because the speed that they move. You want to move faster in life? You want to get through the process of pain faster? Think like a hummingbird. Think life and not death. Think hope and not hate. Think about this. The beak size of a hummingbird actually dictates women or, or, or female hummingbirds have actually bigger beaks usually than male hummingbirds. Why is that? Because the women or the female hummingbirds are the hunters, very much like a lioness versus the lion. Lions don't hunt, the women, the, the females hunt, right? The lions, why they have the big mane around their uh, neck is that's to protect their jugular while the women are lean so that they can move fast. Same with hummingbirds, long beaks, higher metabolism, so they can move fast. They don't conserve as much energy as the males. Why do they have those beaks? So they can get into the flowers that the male birds can't get into. There's purpose in everything. There's purpose in the beaks. There's purpose in your eyelashes. There's purpose in your lips. There's purpose in your ears. There's purpose on the hair in your ears. Believe it or not, everything created for life and that is living has purpose. Here's my final statement, the hummingbird song. Do you know that the hummingbirds, the clicks and the hums and the sounds that a hummingbird makes, do you know those are ultrasonic clicks? Now here's what I'm going to talk about your worship and the words of your mouth, whether you are giving out vulture sounds or you're giving out the song of a hummingbird, which is positive, life building. Are you an energy producer or an energy demander in your team? Are you talking positively or every time you walk in, you're saying, hey, I gotta just tell you about this friend. He just, here's what he didn't do. Instead of being like that, speak life, speak hope, be a hummingbird to the people around you. Here's why the ultrasonic clicks that a hummingbird's actually putting off in their song is actually confusing the insects around them. It makes them better hunters. Do you realize that your song can make you more effective in recruiting? Do you realize that the words of your mouth can make you more effective in being a better hunter for your team? Do you realize that your song has power? So when we talk about your dance, I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. Get your field to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty handed. You know, when you sing your song, when you dance your dance, you have the ability to bring life into a room where people suddenly sit back, just like we do of the hummingbirds, and say, wow. I pray that's what you do this week. Don't be a vulture, be a hummingbird. Don't surround yourself by vultures, look for hummingbirds. Don't make a list of people who prey on dead companies and dead business. Build your business with a business of life that pollinates and duplicates to others. All right, here we go. Here's our winner from last week, Denise Garrett, who won last week, our drawing. Oh, Gus Booth. Excellent. Okay, Gus, we are, it's Pastor Gus Booth, actually, runs a great church up in Minnesota. Uh, we'll be sending you a package of some of our CDs and trainings, and uh, we just love that. And I'm going to send you, let's send them also a couple of the, what's the pastor, let's send them a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Um, we're going to send you a couple of the, uh, Mission po my book, Mission Possible. Zig Ziglar wrote the Ford on that one. Anyhow, for this week, if you like it, share it. Um, we're going to pick a winner next week. Hopefully it's one of you. We love you guys. Remember, now is the time. This is the place. You are the one to help us make life better for many. Leave me a comment below. Tell me where you're watching from. I'm going to be commenting back on all the comments. You guys know I love getting in there. I love hearing your thoughts. And I love your private messages as well. Peace out, everybody. God bless.